Watson Kirkin was a star football player <clears throat> excuse me, at Lassiter High School in Georgia and at Auburn University. But his impact on the world went far beyond football. He was a loving son, brother, and friend. He was a man of great faith as a devout follower of Christ. He was kind and generous and someone who went out of his way to help others. Philip was a large presence in the community, both in Marietta, Georgia, where he grew up, and during his time at Auburn. You probably remember Philip best for his game-winning catch from Cam Newton for a touchdown in the 2010 Iron Bowl to defeat Alabama from the SEC West Brown. I know I do. <laughs> Sadly, though, on June 29th of 2014, Philip died in a tragic car accident at just 23 years of age. Since that terrible day, the Ludson Kirkland family, led by Philip's father, Mike, has kept Philip's memory and legacy alive through the Ludson 43 Foundation. Mike travels the country speaking to various groups about Philip and the goal of the Ludson 43 Foundation, which is to develop the character of young athletes and their coaches, focusing on leadership, charity, compassion, mentorship, hard work, honesty, and faith. We are honored to have Mike Lutzenberg here to speak to us tonight. Mike. Good evening. I'm glad uh, Chris got that comment about Philip with 1138 left in the game. Friday of Thanksgiving, Bright Day Stadium in the southeast corner. Where you beat Kirby and Nick and several players to score game winning touchdowns. And did a little dance in the end zone and joyfully celebrated. It's truly an honor to be here. Uh, I'm a guy from Chicago who lives in Atlanta with four beautiful children, one son and three daughters. I see a war eagle with a lot of pride. I say roll tide soccer with a lot of pride. You can't say roll tide soccer without saying soccer. But I've been blessed to have a wonderful faith and a son who had a phenomenal faith in a relationship with God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And you kids up here, what a beautiful looking group of kids. Even a Mohawk in the audience. <laughs> I don't want to get more hot ones tonight. I forbid it. <laughs> but I'm a numbers guy. It's been 288 days since we lost Philip. And that sounds like a large number, but when you put it in months, it's not. It's not even a year yet. And he was 23 years old, 29 days. Had the world at his fingertips because of who he was and what he did, and his character and his faith. And how he lived humbly and simply just loved others. He didn't take himself too seriously. And I've got dear friends here that made this possible for me to be here tonight. Tony and Sandra Pugh. So Philip had the privilege of playing Ryan. Several of his teammates are here. And if you follow Philip, he went to his grave with 39,000 Twitter followers. And his signature page on his Twitter account was, I know God's working, so I smile. And that's just simply who he was. I've been blessed to speak at 79 high schools since we started our foundation about August 1st. Two weeks ago, Stanford University and Cal Berkeley called because of who Philip was and the name he made for himself to come and talk to their kids. When I go and talk, it's titled simply Phil's Legacy. What legacy are you leaving? So for a few short minutes, I think especially the kids, but even the parents, you can think about where's your legacy at. I like to share and think about What's your brand? You're all creating a brand. You put it out there every day. The brand never stays the same. It either moves forward or moves backwards. And quite frankly, for 23 years and 27 days, Philip brand made positive movement because he simply loved others. But when I go and talk, I ask the kids to ask themselves one question. When you lay your head down on that pillow at night, how many people felt better because they met you that day? So there's a few words. You've already accomplished so much, you kids. Just phenomenal. The stories I've heard about kids overcoming odds, 
high achievement in the classroom. You're well on your way to a successful life. So Philip, I was noting, I don't think Georgia does an event like this. And then I thought maybe they did, and Philip just didn't qualify for it. <laughs> Philip was a 3.5 GPA high school student, 3.2 plus student at Auburn, which was well enough for him to earn all SEC in three years academically. He was a two-time captain, had a couple of ESPN plays in the game, one as a high school and one as a, as a uh, junior Auburn, and he made a wonderful name for himself. As the father and the family, what we're so proud of is how he gave to others. The trips from Auburn along 280 into Birmingham, the children's from St. Vincent's, just to visit with people because he had made a platform for himself playing in this crazy state of Alabama where there's no pro football. Sometimes I make a joke about Alabama, but I can't. <laughs> but it simply was his willingness to give forward with kids like Evan Thomas, who passed away at age 10 from cancer. A young girl named Bailey Moody, who was an athlete at age 10 that found out that she had a tumor in her right leg above her right knee, and the only solution was to amputate that leg and to have an artificial or prosthetic leg. And she went the radical route. She had her foot surgically placed where her right knee is. And she's now 13. She'll go to high school next year. She's strongly considering Alabama because of its adaptive sports program to go play wheelchair basketball. And Philip simply found out from the wonderful Auburn family that this poor girl was suffering near our hometown in Marietta. And he went out of his way. So there's a word that I want the kids to think about. That's, I think, the most fantastic word in the dictionary. It's simply available. Philip had a fondness in his heart and a characteristic to just make himself available. Whether it was signing every autograph, no matter how bad Auburn may have gotten beaten, or how well they played, or if Gus didn't throw the football, he found time to give an autograph. But it's going to be the young girl named Bailey is simply listening. Tell him I can't give you the answer, but to trust in God and pray, and you'll get the right answer, that's who he was. He's meeting another little girl named Casey Carroll, who Philip, for as good looking and handsome as he was, never went to a high school prom. And as a senior, he committed to take a beautiful girl named Casey Carroll prom. And it was a relationship of love, not a romantic love. She was a junior and he was a senior. And he broke her heart a senior year because he got to out of town to win a football award and didn't take Casey to prom. Went to Auburn in May of 2009, played in every game as a true freshman that year in Auburn in 85. Came to be March of 2010 in spring football. He received a concussion in a scrimmage at Jordan Air Stadium and still insisted that we take him back to Auburn to honor a commitment because it was last year's prom that day. So as a freshman in college, he went to his only prom. And the wonderful thing about Casey, if you follow me and buy groceries at Publix on Highway 92 in Marietta, there's a good chance that Casey would bag your groceries because Casey has Down syndrome and is a special needs student. So, available is such a great characteristic to instill in your heart. And that's why we're here on Earth. You've achieved so much already, and you've got such a bright future. There's temptations that I talk to kids about when I go and speak. Temptations that didn't exist when I was your age, such as the internet, or smart technology, and texting while driving. But there's other temptations that were there that we all faced. And decisions to say yes or no to make the right decisions. Philip was phenomenal at choosing, making good decisions. But he was tempted on June 28th, and the important thing that came out of June 28th and the 29th was Philip was with friends. None of them were teammates or former teammates, but they were friends. So in a sense, they were teammates to one another. And on June 28th, being a 23-year-old, he did what a 23-year-old would do. He drank. He knew he was going to stay at a farm. So I want you to think about two words as I close. It's prepare or prepared, and it's aware. Because everything we do in life, we prepare for. Most of you probably came back from spring break within the last few weeks. You prepared to go to spring break. How many bathing suits? Where are we going? Can I bring a friend? You prepared for upcoming prom if it hasn't happened already. What dress am I going to wear? What color? Who's going to take me to prom? You guys, hopefully, you're going to shower. <laughs> you 
you're going to clean out the car so that your date has an enjoyable, good smelling vehicle. We prepare everything we do. You prepare your grades to come by happenstance for most of you. You have to prepare for tests, taking the ACT and the SAT so that you can perform at a high level. Your athletes, you prepare. You don't play a football game on a Friday and just show up the next Friday and play another game. It starts that Saturday. Watching the film to correct your mistakes from Friday night, start to prepare for your next opponent, and it's practice throughout the week. And it goes on and on the examples of athletic preparation. Philip, on June 28th, left Montgomery, Alabama. And I know my son, who's my best friend. I know he prepared for that day. He prepared to have fun. He was going to do two things in his life that we heard he had never done before. He was going to ride a horse, and he was going to mud. The guy from Chicago doesn't get in the mud thing. But he was going to mud that day. So if you know Philip, he brought his toilet to kid because he'll tell you he had the best hair that anybody had. Extra towels, extra clothes. Philip made a little bit of money in his short stint in the NFL. And when he told him to bring food that he wanted to grill out, my bet is he picked up a steak for everyone. And he picked up that case of beer. And as a 23 year old on a 95 degree day, they were having fun. And he started to drink. There were no teammates there, but there were friends. And I ask you kids, as you prepare, and you're tempted, and things cross your paths, and you don't have the courage to say no, or to slow down, or put a limit on some of the temptations, or your friends are doing that, that you continue to be a teammate and a friend, and have the courage to say enough is enough. That did not happen on June 28. And as a result, drinking led to late night driving, early morning driving, Philip jumped into the back seat of a vehicle, they were speeding, and three of the four kids didn't wear seatbelts. And I tell kids, when it comes whether you're a boy or a girl, an athlete or an on athlete, you're black or white, you're a 4.0 or 2.0, the combination of four decisions, there is no discrimination. And Philip Francis is a true example. He had a nice job, he had fame, because he could catch a football. And he loved people. And it was all taken from him because he didn't have the common sense to know not to do something or when to say when. And his friends didn't do it. He didn't look out for them, and they didn't look out for him. You're going to be blessed, so you're going to go on and play at athletics. You're going to look out for your teammate. You're going to have the courage in competition. When that right guard doesn't pull, he misses his assignment and 10 other players do their job and the play gets blown up. And you're not going to rip that teammate. You're going to pat him on the tail when he comes back in the hall and say, get in the game. Make sure you carry your position forward and your responsibility. It's the same in all the girls' sports. You've got to be a good teammate. You've got to have the courage as a teammate in life to be able to be told, I, I'm okay. Stop bragging on me. To stop your friends from doing things that they shouldn't do because they've taken it to the edge. Because when you do some of the bad things, the temptations, all the preparedness goes away. That day, I guarantee you, my son planned on sleeping at a farm and not getting into a vehicle. But because he couldn't handle the temptation thrown at him by alcohol that day, his awareness was gone. And that's what happens. So please remember, available, prepared, and aware. Open your mind and your heart to those less fortunate. There's immense talent sitting on the stage in the shape of 104 seniors soon to go off to college or jobs where you're on your own. You've got to look out for one another. You've got to be a role model that you've already been and continue to be. And I make a promise to kids with a belief before that, that if you could match Philip's character and the faith that he had at age 23 with God and his son Jesus Christ, and his willingness to pay it forward to help others by being humble and opening his heart, my belief is you're going to be a better person. But my promise is 
if you avoid the temptations that Philip did not handle on June 28th, which bled into June 29th, you will live a long, prosperous, and happy life. You're being rewarded tonight. Enjoy it. Finish your senior year strong, putting out good character and as a role model for your junior, sophomores, and freshmen at your respective high schools. Go to prom if it hasn't occurred yet and make good decisions to say no when the temptation to do things that you're not ready to do yet or not legal to do yet are given to you. Be a good friend and don't let your friends do something you know they shouldn't do. And when graduation comes, make that right decision when you're tempted to go down to Panama City or 30A and get away to the beach and be without mom and dad for the first time. When you think you're an adult, and bring you off to college and have the courage to say, I'm going to watch out for everyone. I'm not going to succumb to the temptations. And if you do that, you're going to head off to college in the fall or jobs, being the wonderful people that you are today. God bless, congratulations, and enjoy the evening.